The King's College and Boys Association has held a media roundtable to kick off the 111th annual King's Week of King's College. This year, it hopes to take steps to improve the quality of education sector of Nigerian pre and post the COVID-19 pandemic. Plus, TV correspondent at the bank, Odunuyi, has more on this. A media roundtable to address the deteriorating quality of education and welfare of Nigerian students was held by the King's College Old Boys Association in a bid to mark the 111th anniversary of King's College. The theme of this year's event is education. We want the people to know what we've been doing thus far and what we are planning to do. And the theme for the anniversary this year is education, the way forward. What do we do about education? How do we fund education? What are the new ways of educating our children? Uh, however, this year, because of COVID uh, concerns, uh, we have zeroed in on just doing the lecture and uh, the AGM. It's those, both those events will be done um, partially physical. There will be a, a small group of people that will be physically uh, located at our assembly hall. And then we'll be Zooming to a broad audience across the world. The declining quality of education in Nigeria was decried, and it was noted that action to remedy this had to be taken as soon as possible by both the government and individuals. There must be a policy of education for all Nigerian children. Number two, government must put together the roadmap and the plan and the policies and the structure to make this possible. And one of the issues that we want to zero in on is the fact that publicly run schools are generally not well run. And so we want to take or propose to the government some other model where the private sector can come in and partner with the government to, um, to fund uh, education properly. The Old Boys Association expressed its plan to create a trust that will take over the running of the school while highlighting some of the issues the institution faces. They're not funding this school adequately. Uh, to some extent, we support them, even in terms of uh, supporting teacher payment and things like that. So, but it's all unofficial. So we're coming to say, let us help you. The association would rely on the reach and influence of Vice President Yemi Osibadjo, who is to give the keynote address to implement its resolution. It's not for nothing that the Vice President's Excellency uh, Yemi Osibadjo is uh, at the helm of this discussion. While he was the Attorney General of Lagos State, Lagos State handed over mission schools back to uh, their owners. It is the belief of the association that this step will pave the way for improving the quality of education in the country. For Plus TV Africa, Adebanke Odunui. A pro-Southwest political group, also known as Southwest Progressive Youth and People's Movement, has called for support for the North to achieve its ambition of a Southwest president in the 2023 general election. The convener of the group, Ajayi Tai, was spoke to newsmen in Abuja, saying its call to the North is in the spirit of peace, understanding and fair play. He says an attempt to retain power by the North in the next general election is untenable and unacceptable. We know, of course, that they are a very, very important part of this nation. And, of course, we cannot do without their support and their blessing to ensure that we achieve this. And that is one of the reasons behind this press conference. We therefore want to advise our brothers and anyone who still believes that after 2023, the North should be given another opportunity to desist from such call. We hereby call on renowned progressive community northern individuals, our great and intelligent traditional rulers from the north, men and women of timber and calibers, with other very important northern stakeholders, not only to for the sake of peace. Let the world understand, and Nigerians, both the daughter and sons, father and children, to give support to Eurobus agenda for 2023 presidential to be the portion for them to rule. I want to tell all women to come out, to come and support us, because we want Nigeria to be one. And it is women that can move Nigeria to move forward. In politics, 
when we go by it, it's a game of number. If we go by the number, it will go back to the north. And we feel like if I have somebody who is there for me when I need him most, I should be there for him when he needs me most. So the Yoruba people have been playing a role and they play a major role in becoming, in, in, in making the power to come back to the north. So we have to also retaliate. We have to give them back to them. Some members of the People's Democratic Party have described the visit of some chieftains and the state chairman of the party in the six states of the southwest region led by former governor of Ikiti State, Ayodele Fayoshi, to the National Secretariat in Abuja on Monday as misinterpretation of the situation of the party in the zone. According to them, the party's constitution recognizes the sitting governor of Oyo State, Sheyi Makende, as the leader of the party in the south. West region, who should lead all members in the geopolitical zone on such important trip. The PDP members in Ekiti State, led by Senator Biodun Olujemi, made this displeasure known at a party stakeholders meeting held in the state. I can take anybody to the National Secretariat of the party and we'll take pictures. What is important is what was said while they were there. Nothing could have been said. The truth is, the former governor does not lead the party in the zone. It is engineer Sheyi Makine that is our leader in the zone. And anything that will happen in the zone has to come through him. Because you see, the former governor would never allow anyone to do that to him when he was there. So we will stand behind engineer Sheyi Makine because nobody can rubbish him, nobody can wish him away. He is the leader of the party, and I'm so grateful that we were able, last night, to publish our resolution at a meeting we held, saying that Engineer Sheyi Makinde remains the leader of the party in the zone, and anything that will come from our zone must emanate from him. The Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, has condemned the action of the Minister for State for Education, Chukwemeka Mwajuba, over his alleged interference in the Okigwe Senatorial Zone's primary election. The National Coordinator of Huriwa, Emmanuel Omubiko, says the behavior of the minister is unacceptable, thereby asking President Mohamed Buhari to immediately effect his sack. Ongubiko, while speaking in Abuja, says the minister has imposed his preferred candidate on the people of the zone by the October 31st senatorial by elections. We are coming, Mr. President, to sack this minister of education. And if he's so much uh, happy about the job he is doing for him as his minister of State education, and he should take me away from that very strategic ministry because. A person in that position should not be seen associating with a person who has a question. I'm not, we're not, we're not concluding that he does not have certificate. We're saying he has not shown his certificate. And uh, there are uh, estimations that his claim that his certificates are missing is not completely and totally uh, verifiable. So, why should the Minister of Education be the person that is trying to? force the people of Okibo Senator Zone, you know, to uh, with such a, 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 a candidate, we say this is totally unacceptable. We're going to write a petition on this. You know, we're going to demand, we're going to remind Mr. President that the NGO community is very much alive and they're watching. They're watching to see the character of persons that any party is going to present for office. We are not concerned. We are concerned about whoever eventually wins. Whoever wins and if the process is legitimate, good are fine. The retired members of Nigerian Armed Forces, Reminav, has denounced the neglect and lack of welfare of veteran armed forces and called on government and other private agencies to truly ensure the welfare of officers and men of the force, as well ensuring the payment of their proper pensions and entitlement. This is made known during the Global Standard Quest for Veterans Welfare and Awards. I was there to bring the report. 
The retired members of Nigeria Armed Forces, Reminaf, a registered body of consigned military veterans cutting across the ranks and files, have cried out for help from government and good-spirited Nigerians to come to their aid, according to the group irrespective of ethnic, religious and socio-political interests, the hardship faced by their members are unbearable. While recognizing some support from organizations and private agencies, the group calls for more support and the welfare of of members. The pains of the veteran community is just being a neglect situation because if they prioritize their responsibility, they will see that if they factor in the concerns of the veterans, it will even strengthen the fighting troops. Once you treat someone that has retired very, very well, you are at the same time uh, encouraging those at the forefront of that struggle. Because when somebody is old and inactive, that is when he requires help. One would expect that indeed the heroes on whose blood, sweat and on whose back this nation was built would not be forgotten. The opposite, however, seems to be the case. Veterans, some of them, they have the skill, they have the acumen, they have the knowledge. And they are, they, though they are retired, but they are not tired. They can still be integrated into some other areas. We have majority of them, they are enlightened, some of them have masters, some of them are pursuing their PhD. Let us try to encourage them and, uh, you know, give them the right motivation. The group, while commanded the government effort, believe there is a need for further price of their demand. They are responding, but there is a stop button. In every government situation in Nigeria, if they start building roads, if you don't put your eyes on it, they abandon the roads. If they start um, ensuring education, if you don't put your eyes on it, they abandon it. Or somebody diverts the fund. So the purpose of Remenaf is to make sure every win situation is kept on a trajectory. We are getting results. However, if it is not properly done, it will not. It will discourage even the serving soldiers and. Uh, when there is no morale, certainly where they are now and uh, defending the nation, they will not be able to put in all their efforts. Honor to the fallen and the living heroes who risked and continue to risk their lives for us should be appreciated. And that's it on Plus Report. To follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and just subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I am Jacinta Ubiuku.